Hi everyone, my name is Burt Wagner, and we're going to talk about some SQL querying today. In particular, about how do we make our JSON queries run super fast. So I've been working with SQL Server 2016 a lot recently, and one of the features that it introduces is JSON functionality on the SQL Server. Now, a lot of people might hesitate to use JSON because they know, you know, they say like, oh, SQL Server, you know, it's for relational data. It's good at joining tables of data. It's not really meant to parse strings, right? And that's what JSON is. It's a giant text string. So you would assume that SQL Server isn't really good at that. But it turns out the built-in JSON SQL Server functions are pretty efficient. Now, they're not as great as if you were to maybe parse JSON in something like .NET, um, but they're pretty close. Um, I have some previous blog posts on that if you want to read the details. But the thing that you can do in SQL Server to make it extra super fast is to put an index on your JSON field. And not just on the JSON field, but individual properties within that JSON string. And the way you do that is with a computed column. So if you're unfamiliar with computed columns, they're basically columns you add to the table which get derived during runtime, right? So um, they don't exist on the data layer, on the data page stored on the SQL server. Um, they get kind of computed at runtime, which isn't the most efficient thing either because then you're doing row by row computations. But if you add an index on that computed column, something interesting happens. That's what I want to show you today. So let's take a look at some example code. I have this query here that creates this table called dealer inventory and it has three columns on it. It has an ID, um, identity column, nothing fancy there. Uh, it has a year integer column and then it has a JSON uh, data column which is just nvarchar. So in SQL Server 2016, if you want to be able to use the JSON functions that are built in, everything needs to be nvarchar. That's how JSON data is stored. It's not its own special data type or anything like that. Um, so if we run that, if we create our table, and you can see, let's insert some data into it. So we're inserting just into the year field and JSON data, because the identity column will self-populate. Um, we're just putting 2017 for all the years. And our JSON data, it has two properties. It has a make property. So we got Volkswagen, Honda, Subaru, and we have our models, which are Golf, Civic, and Impreza. So if we run that, we'll add some data. And then if we take a look at our table, We'll see it there. We got our three columns, ID, year, and JSON data. So far, so good. And if we go ahead and take a look at these results, um, I want to use some undocumented uh, SQL Server functions that um, I guess they've since been documented by Paul Randall and others online. So Paul Randall kind of built these while he was at Microsoft. So obviously he knows a lot about them. Um, but they're a really good way to take a look at what the data looks like at the page level. So uh, first thing we need to do is just turn on this uh, this trace flag 3604. Um, obviously, if you're following along, don't do this on a production system. Never run any code that you're not familiar with on a production system. But we need to turn that on in order to get dbcc in uh, to work. So um, I'm not going to go through all the details of what it does, but basically sandbox is my database name. Then we have our dealer inventory table. If we run that, we'll see what all the data pages are for that table. And so if you're not familiar, data pages, those are how the SQL Server actually stores the data on the hard drive, right? So it breaks it up into these eight kilobyte files called pages, and your data lives in those pages. Indexes will also have pages, um, and we'll see those in a second. So if we look at our particular example here, um, since we only have three rows of data and it's small, it all fit in within eight kilobytes, and we could see based on page type of one, that's our data page. Um, so if we actually grab that page ID, 305120, and we put it in, I need to change this code here. So every time you recreate a table, it's not guaranteed you're gonna get the same page. But now we'll, we'll use dbcc page to actually see what the data on that page looks like. So I've typed in my page ID, and here's the data we got. So let me make this a little bit bigger um, so we can see better. And there's a lot of information here, um, but what I want to bring your attention to is if we scroll down, eventually we'll get to these sections that say slots, right? So slot zero, that's like row one that we're looking at. And then we have three different columns, columns one, two, and three. And the key thing to notice here is we only have three columns or three columns of data 
are actually stored here, right? So we can actually see where the data is stored. So we see ID is one, year is 2017, and then this is our JSON data for the Volkswagen. Um, no other data is present. We're not really concerned with these other rows here, these rows that say memory dump, right? So these are the actual hex values um, that are coming from the data page. If we ran them through a, uh, you know, a converter, a hex converter, we'd see that they would show up as 1, 2017 in our JSON string. But we might as well look at the easy to see data. So we have those three columns there, and if we scroll down, right, we'll find it for the second row for the Honda here. And if we scroll down some more, we'll see it for the Subaru as well. So I mean, what this proves is basically our three rows of data are all fitting within this one page. Now, um, something interesting we'll do is if we go ahead and we add a computed column, this will be a non-persisted column, which means it doesn't exist on the data page. It gets computed every time. Now there is a difference. Um, there's a different thing that you can do with persisted computed columns, but that's not what we're getting into today. Um, but if we actually create that computed column, I'm calling it make, and I'm using the JSON value function to parse out the make property from our data. So if we take a look at what that table looks like, we'll see here, um, we still have you know our ID, year, and JSON data fields, but now our computed column, which is getting generated every time the query is ran, has our makes in there parsed out, so Volkswagen, Honda, and Subaru. So if we go back to using our dbcc end, we'll see still our page ID is 305120. Um, and if we go and run our dbcc page to see what that data looks like, um, if we scroll down here, let me make this bigger again, we'll see that uh, everything looks exactly the same, right? So for our first row, ID of 1, 2017, our make is still um, our JSON data is Volkswagen and our model is Golf, right? There's no entry here for just that parsed out make column value, right? Um, it still just has the three original values and when our select from statement runs, SQL Server is generating, parsing out using that JSON value function, parsing out the make property. Um, and right, if we, same thing for rows two and three, there's only three rows of data, one for each column. There is no fourth column for make. So, Obviously, if you just use this computed column and you query it and you've got, you know, tens of thousands and hundreds, millions of rows on a table and you're trying to parse out data, it's going to be really slow because um, it has to do something for each row in that data set um, that you're trying to do. So instead, what we can try to do to make it quicker is we can create an index on our computed column. Um, and something interesting happens here. Um, I call it a cheat code in my blog post because it's... Um, the reason why the JSON query runs so fast is because it's kind of cheating, um, and you'll see why in a second. But if we create this non-clustered index um, on our computed column here, make, right, so it doesn't exist on the actual data page itself. It gets generated every time. But if we create that and then we go to the dbcc end, again, you'll see this looks a little different. Our data page here is still 305120. But we now have this other, this last row here, this 305128 that uh, page type of two means it's an index page. So that's the page where all the index uh, you know, pointers kind of exist. So we'll take a look at both of these. Um, the first one, let's look at the data page again. Let me just set this up so that'll be 305.120 and 305.128. So if we look at the data page, right, this first one is the data page here, we will see that nothing should have changed. We scroll down until we find our data, and our data down here, oh, I think I passed the first one. There we go. Our, our first one here, right, is still just three entries for um, our original columns of the table. Our non-persisted computed column is not there. Um, same thing for rows two and three. There's just three columns um, for each of those. Now, if we go and take a look at our index, We run that, right? So our output looks a little different. You'll see in this lower output here, what's really interesting is we have those computed column values separated out. So what's happening? And in essence, when that index gets created, SQL saves uh, those parsed out makes, right? So the Honda, Volkswagen, Subaru. Um, even though that data column isn't persistent on the data page of, for the table, the index keeps that parsed value parsed out, 
right? So this only happens whenever the index would have to update the value, right? So on the initial insert, or if there's an update to that, that field or whatever, it would have to get regenerated at that point. But every other time, if you're just running a select statement, SQL Server should use that index to get the pre-parsed value um, because it'll be a lot faster, right? It's already parsed. It doesn't have to run that JSON value function to parse it out. So I wanted to do this demo to basically show you how fast JSON parsing could be on SQL Server, even if it is technically a cheat since the data does live pre-parsed in the index. But, you know, moral of the story here is don't be afraid of using these JSON parsing functions in SQL Server because it actually is really efficient if you are taking the time to create your indexes on computed columns. Um, you'll be able to retrieve rows back uh, very quickly that way. So have fun.